Hi and welcome to a tutorial over writing chemical formula equations from words. There are some symbols that we're going to use in our chemical reactions. So S is going to stand for solid, L will stand for liquid, G for gas, and AQ means it's an aqueous solution, which just means that the substance has been dissolved in water. So these first four all relate to the state of matter of the substance. Okay, plus signs are going to be used to separate two reactants or products. We are going to read them as reacts with on the reactant side and reads as and on the product side. If you see an arrow, this is going to separate your reactants from your products. It's very important. You read these as yields or produces. If you see that there is a triangle above the arrow, that means that heat has been re added to your reactants. Lastly, you may see the presence of catalysts in some of your chemical reactions. Catalysts are substances that increase the rate of the reaction, but are not used up themselves. It's very important to know. The formula for the catalyst will be written above the arrow. So in this example, manganese oxide is our catalyst. It's not actually reacting with the reactants, but it's speeding up the reaction so it happens more quickly. Okay, something important to remember when you're writing chemical equations are your seven diatomic elements. Okay, what does diatomic mean? Well, the word diatomic means two atoms. Di for two, atomic referring to atoms. So these diatomic elements have to be written in pairs because they do not occur as single atoms. So they are iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. See that they all have little twos? This is correct. If you write them by themselves, that would be bad. It's not correct. So to help you remember these seven diatomic elements, my preferred method is to remember that they make a seven on the periodic table with the exception of hydrogen. Don't forget hydrogen, but remembering that they make a 7 on the periodic table it seems to be the easiest method. Okay, so when you're writing your chemical formula equations from words, something very important to review is your nomenclature. That's actually on the next page um, in this chart, which is very helpful. So it shows you the four different types that we've learned, molecular ionic acids and bases, and it gives you how to identify them, um, how to name them, and then in formula writing as well. So please review this chart if you're needing help with nomenclature. Okay, so here's an example of the type of problem we may give you. It says solid sodium metal reacts with water to produce aqueous sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So the first thing we're going to do is turn it into a formula equation. Okay, and it says don't forget to add solid, liquid, gas, or aqueous. So let's take this piece by piece. It says solid sodium. So sodium is Na. It's not one of our diatomics, so we don't need to put a subscript, but we do need to label it S for solid. Okay? So sodium, what says it reacts with, that's an indicator to put a plus sign. It's reacting with water, which we know is H2O. Um, unless otherwise indicated, water is labeled L for liquid. Then it says to produce. To produce always means arrow. An aqueous sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is a base made up of sodium with an oxidation number of plus 1. Hydroxide's OH with an oxidation number of minus 1. Remember we crisscross these oxidation numbers and since it's a 1 to 1 ratio it's just an AOH. It tells me it's aqueous, so I want to label it AQ. Remember, that just means it's been dissolved in water. Then it says AND, so plus sign, hydrogen gas. So hydrogen is one of our diatomic elements, so you need the little 2 and label it G for gas. So I'm not quite done. That was just step one. Step two says I need to balance this. So go ahead and do an atom inventory if you would like. I'll do it with you. Okay. There's several ways to do an atom inventory. You can either use the chart method where you would just put sodium, hydrogen, and oxygen with reactants and products. Or if you like the way where you write it below the arrow, sodium, hydrogen and oxygen um, with 
the number of atoms on the reactant side to the left and the number of atoms on the product side to the right. Either method is foolproof and very good, so feel free to use either one. Okay, so I'm going to use the bottom one since I have more space. Um, so there's one sodium on the reactant side, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. On the product side, I've got one sodium, I've got one oxygen, and I've got three hydrogens. So that three hydrogens causes a problem for me. Um, so what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to put a 2 right here in front of sodium hydroxide. What that does is it creates four uh, hydrogens now so that when I put a 2 here I have four hydrogens. Well, this also changed the number of oxygens. Um, so on the reactant side I have four hydrogens and I also have two oxygens now. On the product side, I now have two sodiums and I've got two oxygens and the four hydrogens. So the only thing that needs to be added is a two in front of sodium in order to balance the sodium. Okay, so you can see here um, that we've balanced the chemical reaction after we wrote it from words. Okay, let's look at another example in the white practice packet. Okay, if you scroll through the white practice packet, we do have um, some help for you um, when it comes to naming. You can do some of these practice and then look up the answers online to see if you're doing it correctly. Ask your teacher in class if you're not very good at this because you do really need to be pretty crisp with your nomenclature to do well this semester. Okay, so let's do another example. Writing or balancing equations worksheet. So write the formula equations for each of the following and then balance. I'll just do number one with you for more practice. I highly recommend doing all of these on this sheet. Okay, so ammonia, which is NH3, it tells me it's a gas, so I'm going to write G, reacts with means plus sign, solid iodine. So remember, iodine is a diatomic, so you need a little two there. And because it's solid, we need an S. To form means I need an arrow. Solid nitrogen triiodide. So whenever you see a prefix, that means this is molecular. So there's one nitrogen and there's three iodines and it's solid. Okay? And plus sign, hydrogen gas. So don't forget hydrogen is a diatomic. And don't forget your G for gas. And then lastly, you do need to balance this as well. So I'll do the other method this time. Nitrogen, hydrogen, iodine, reactants, products, whichever one you like is great. Okay, so nitrogen on the reactants, I've got one, I've got three hydrogens, and I've got two iodines. On the product side, I've got one nitrogen, three iodines and two hydrogens. Okay, so we can see with hydrogen and iodine, I'm going to have to use that least common multiple principle that we talked about in the last video. Okay, so I need six hydrogens on both sides. So to get that, I'm going to put a two here and I'm going to put a three here. Well, I didn't just affect hydrogen, I affected nitrogen on the reactant side too. So now I have two nitrogens. So I'm going to put a two here on the product side to fix that. Well, it didn't just affect nitrogen, it affected iodine as well. I have six iodines on the product side, so I'm going to put a three here. So I have six iodines on the reactant side. I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please utilize the additional resources on our website for more help.